on to full local government. Thank you all. Next up is item number three, HB 0609 by Representative Halsey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and we thank you, committee. First and second, tell us about your bill. All right, this is a this is a a bill that deals with equal access for minor parties. Tennessee State Constitution, Article One, Section Five, states very, very plainly that the election shall be free and equal. And I don't know if you knew this or not. I didn't really know this till I started digging around in it, but. As a Republican or a Democrat, the way state law is now, all you have to do when you want to run for any state office or a statewide race, all you've got to get is 25 signatures. If you want to run on a minor party, and, you, and all that means is, beside your name, you want the party that you're running under, like a Green Party or a Constitution Party or Libertarian Party. Under existing state law, if you want that, you have to get 56,000, or 50, yes, 56,083 signatures. Now, that's what current law states right now. So that's because our state law says that if you want to run as a minor party, you have to get 2.5% of the last governor's race total number of people that did it. And that's how many signatures you got, and that's why you get that 56,000. So, of course, that's just about unattainable for somebody. Now, if you want to run as an independent, you only have to get 25 signatures, but nobody knows what your platform is you, because there's no party to identify yourself with. You're just independent. So what this bill does is it says let's reduce that 2.5% down to 0.5%. That computes to about 12,000 signatures. Now, to me, that's really not quite equal and fair but to minor parties, they say that's attainable, and they can do that. So they're willing to say, yeah, let's go down to 0.5% and, and allow us on a statewide race to only have to get 12,000 signatures. Now, that puts us closer in the ballpark with other states and what they require for minor parties. If you're just looking around us, Florida doesn't require any signatures for a minor party. Kentucky requires 5,000. Louisiana requires 1,000, North Carolina requires 11,700, Missouri requires 10,000, Mississippi doesn't require any, South Carolina requires 10,000, and Virginia requires 10,000. So 12,000 is much closer to that, and it's attainable. Right now, with the way our state law is written, we're the third worst state as far as how many signatures you have to get. So this, this bill does two other things. Um, uh, under existing state law, if you get your 56,000 signatures and you're running a statewide race, if you get 5% of the vote, you're, you can be declared in and labeled a minor party. And if you are labeled as a minor party during the next election, you don't have to get to 56,000 signatures again because you got the label. But if you get less than 5%, you've got to get 56,000 signatures again if you're running the next election. So this, this bill would change that number from 5% down to 1% um, and lower that retention. The third thing that it does is under existing law, if you get 5%, it kicks off a mandatory primary. This bill says, no, we'll reduce that or we'll increase that to 25% before it kicks off a primary. And that's just to keep the expense of a primary off of there. And in this case, off of the physical note. So that's the three things that this bill does. I have um, uh, scheduled uh, Chairman Williams and Chairman Crawford to speak. Chairman Williams. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman Holtz. I just, I think you, mainly as a point of clarification, so... Uh, you can run as an independent right now, and these rules don't apply. But if you wanted to run as a libertarian or otherwise, that these these rules would apply. Well, I guess the question is: is if you wanted to run, then why wouldn't you just why wouldn't you just run as an independent, Chairman? The, that's what they've done in the past, but nobody knows what they stand for unless it's one on one that, that you're talking. But there's no platform and there's no party to tie them to. It's just independent. Um, actually, the, the, the uh, Sixth Circuit 
U.S. Court of Appeals said in a case against Tennessee that th this is what they said. Um, um, hold on. Too many parties could result in voter confusion if they're all labeled as independent. It is a puzzling proposition that voters should be less confused by a ballot listing numerous candidates without a party designation than by a similar ballot including party, de party designations. So they're saying if, if you had a libertarian and a green and a constitution all running on independent and they all got an I beside their name, no, nobody knows you know, who they're affiliated with. Okay, thank you. Chairman Crawford. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have maybe two questions, but one to start with. This bill that, that we have before us today, was the dropping from 5% to 1%, is this the exact same bill that came before us last year that failed, or has there been changes in this No, bill? this is pretty much, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Go ahead, Jim. This is pretty much the same bill, yes. Thank you. Any other, uh, what, oh, Chairman Shaw? Oh, Representative Shaw, it's too many chairmen on this committee. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that promotion. <laughs> um, and I've been looking at this, and to be honest, I've uh, been lobbied a whole lot on this. I really have. Uh, here, here is what I'm wondering. I think in Tennessee, you got Republican, Democrat, and Independent. And to be perfectly honest, that's about the way Tennesseans think out of one group or the other. They're either a Democrat, they're Republican, or they are an independent, which you can choose either one right now. Uh, let's just say libertarian or green parties. I don't know which party would come closer to thinking like my party or your party, I don't know. But to add another party to me really takes away from all of us, from your part. When you put, somebody cut my mic off, that. when you put a name on the ticket, if it's a Republican and a Democrat, an independent, Green Party, Libertarian, or whatever, people have tendency to vote with their group more so in some ways than they do for the character of the person that's on the ballot. So I think what we're going to do is split the voters up more. And we're already facing issues right now with the voting. And I mean, I know you know that whole lot of issues right now. And I think we're going to create more havoc by adding another party than we are if you just Look on the ballot, and if you are Republican, you like this guy, this lady, or if you're a Democrat, you like this, this fella or this lady, you're an independent, don't like either one of them. But when you add that other party, then you're going to take votes away from other people that really think and believe the very same thing. I, I just don't, I'm trying to figure out why do we need another party with the system that we've got right now. And, with, and that's with all due respect. I appreciate your efforts here, but I just don't, I can't understand what we are accomplishing. Chairman, uh, I know uh, I, I usually, it's, uh, I guess you call it free roaming. I feel if a speaker is up, they can answer the question without my permission, but you please go ahead. Okay, okay, thank you. And, and, and thank you, Representative. But the, the whole point of it is, is, is twofold. What the Constitution says is, is, is equal access no matter what party. By the way, there, there have been 40 minor parties in the history of the state of Tennessee that played significant roles in elections and campaigns in this state since we started as a state, 40 of them. It hadn't always been Democrat and Republican. And it appears that in the 60s, the Democrats and the Republicans got together and said, let's make a law and lock this up so that it's only a two-party system from now on. And from what I can hear in the history of it, it was because there was one guy running for governor, and, and he kept running every time, and the guys got tired of it, so they wrote, they wrote this law where, where he'd have to have 56 signatures to run. But the other part of it is, 
is that's the whole face of a republic and a democracy. If you use the word democracy, that's the whole face of it is that people have choices on who to vote for. And it's the same thing here. Um, I can't see a party being hurt by this. Well, that, I can see in one case where, where you, you might split the vote. Let's say that a, a Marxist Socialist Party lines up. You know, uh, that, that might split a, a vote a little bit. But at the end of the day, it's constitutional. And at the end of the day, the citizens of the state having equal access to a ballot and who the people are that run, and I, I think far outweighs any other problems with it. Any other questions? Seeing none, we proceed. To, excuse me. Oh, Chairman. No, no. Okay. Uh, seeing none, we'll go ahead. Um, I don't know where Representative Williams went. His stuff is still here, so he must have to take a call. Uh, seeing none, um, we will proceed to vote on the bill. All those in favor of the bill, say aye. All those opposed say nay. 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 Bill fails with no. Sorry, well, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee.